I'm Colt Stevens from Horseshoe Farms, and today we're going to be talking about ammunition. Um, today we're going to be talking about the projectile grains. Um, projectile grains is something that oftentimes I see people confused on. Um, the grains are not a weight of the powder. Um, we're going to talk about that in just a second. When we talk about grains, and especially when you're talking about what's on the box, this is Winchester Silver Tip 357 Magnum, um, 145 grain. 145 grain is not the weight of the powder charge. This is the weight of the actual bullet projectile tip. Um, we've got a, a, a poster here that we're gonna show you in just a second. What we're talking about is the actual silver part of this projectile, this cartridge, the projectile is what we're talking about. Um, that is the 145 grain portion is the part that's in silver right here. So we'll start off with this handy poster that we have here. This is an NRA basic pistol um, poster we have here. So what we're talking about is the projectile right here, um, the actual bullet. Um, when you talk about cartridges, you're not just talking about these are not bullets. Bullets are what actually go through the muzzle. Um, you might be familiar with movies. If you see um, the whole cartridge uh, flying out of the barrel, that is incorrect. You're just talking about this portion up here. Um, the case is just a container that holds the powder, the primer, and the bullet itself and contains the reaction. Um, so when we're talking about grains, um, grains on the box, just this projectile right here, the top part, the actual bullet, not the cartridge itself. Um, powder charge is weighted in grains, but you will not find that information on the box. So, um, so what is grains? Grains is a unit of measurement of H2O. Um, in this case, we're measuring lead. Um, it's used for extremely lightweight um, objects and amounts. Um, down here we have a couple of statistics. 7,000 grains is one pound and 437.5 grains is one ounce. Um, so of course you can't say, um, if we're talking about nine millimeter, um, one of the higher grain um, weights is 147. You wouldn't just say, well, it's about a quarter quarter ounce is the, how much my projectile weighs. Um, it's better to start on the low end and work your way up to 147 grain versus going the other direction. So it's more exact. That's why they, they prefer the grain weight. So when we're talking about 124 grain 9 millimeter that we have here, this is a Remington Ultimate Defense 124 grain Golden Saber Brass Jacket Hollow Point. So when we say 124 grain, we were talking about a 124 grain projectile, not 124 grains of powder charge, because that would be a lot of powder. Because lead is a lot heavier than powder is. Um, typically, um, the powder charge is between seven to 20 grains. It's not much at all. Um, 124 grains would be quite a lot of powder in this scenario. So, um, the powder charge is, um, we won't really get into a lot to that today, um, powder charge is normally found in reloading manuals. Um, like I said, it's not on the box. And if you want to know something like that, you'd have to go on like the Hornady website and check for that specific um, box of ammo. And you can see what the powder charge is. For most intensive purposes, they have figured out what is optimal for that, that grain projectile. Um, projectile weight is really um, the biggest um, control of what that cartridge is going to do. And there's quite a lot of variants. Um, if you see um, hollow point is usually like a plus P, um, though not always. Um, plus P is gonna have a higher velocity because it's a different kind of powder. Um, and they'll typically have a um, lighter, projectile like 115 grain in a nine millimeter plus P um, so you can get the maximum velocity the flattest shooting and the most penetration 
is what you're looking for. Um, why are grains important? Um, projectile weight is going to control the velocity. So if you're talking about like a hunting round, um, seven millimeter, um, you would want a low grain um, with high velocity. If you're hunting deer, you want it to penetrate the hide very well. Um, and especially because once that projectile leaves the muzzle, it's going to immediately lose velocity because it has drag. It's kind of like an airplane. Um, you have environmental factors that are acting upon that projectile that's going to change it in flight and it's also going to slow it down. Um, that's also why it drops off over a distance. It's losing velocity, it's losing that power that pushed it forward. Um, when, while it's in the barrel, it's gaining velocity, but once it leaves the muzzle, it's losing energy. Um, so there's, there's different, um, different reasons why you would want high velocity versus low velocity. Um, suppressors are a good example of this. If you're shooting subsonic, um, anything below 1050 to 1100 uh, feet per second, that's going to be subsonic. If you're above 1100 feet per second, you're talking about supersonic. And in the case of suppressors, um, suppressors will tone down the noise of the muzzle, um, the gas is escaping the muzzle, but not the supersonic crack. If you shoot something like a 223556 through a suppressor, it's going to still have that supersonic crack, but it may have less noise because the gases were controlled upon escaping. Um, so for the optimal results, you would need below 1100 feet per second subsonic rounds to use in your suppressor. If you see like nine millimeter, so 115 grain is about 1250, 1280, um, plus P is around a little bit more than that. Um, so that would be 115 grain. Um, 147 grain is right at that 1100 feet per second mark, and it would be more optimal for a suppressor. So that's why people that shoot subsonic 9mm usually run 147 or over through their suppressors because it sounds better, it's a lot quieter. Next we'll talk about um, the actual projectiles themselves. So um, this Winchester right here is a Jacketed hollow point. Um, it's jacketed with a, um, they call it silver tip. I don't think it's actually silver. It may be some kind of like aluminum or something like that. Um, that's a jacketed hollow point. So they actually scoop out part of the um, projectile and get the grains lower. Um, it may be like 160, 170 grain without that hollow point. As opposed to something like this 38 special. This is PPU. 130 grain FMJ. We'll take a look at this real quick. So this is a round nose as opposed to hollow point, um, fully jacketed um, projectile. So this is a, a copper, um, copper jacket um, as opposed to just bare lead. If it was lead, you would notice that right off, but this is a copper looking jacket to it. Um, there's reasons they do that. Um, it's better for the barrel. There's less fouling that accumulates in the barrel. Um, lead will, of course, melt after, if it's high velocity. I don't think they really worry about that in 38 Special, but if you're talking 223 higher velocity um, rounds, you would want jacketed. Um, so you actually ensure that your, your projectile stays in one form and not melt in, in the journey. Um, things like 22, 250 that are pushing like 4,000 feet per second, almost certainly are jacketed. Um, hand casts, just bare lead, wouldn't do very well. By the time it hit the target, it would be liquid. Um, albeit molten liquid, but not, not totally what you're looking for. Um, so, um, FMJ, typically it's cheaper to produce, um, round nose. That's why you see a lot of people shoot that at the range. Hollow point costs a little bit more to, uh, to manufacture. Um, there's more ma machining you have to do, um, but it is, it is more effective as a defensive load. That's why they're a little bit more expensive. You may not want to, you won't want to shoot that at the range. So, um, And with that, we'll conclude the video and please check the link in the description and like and subscribe.